everybody. If you have been meaning to get to know Python, how to do data analysis in Python, but you haven't started yet, this is the place for you. So in the next 10 or 15 minutes, we'll walk through from zero up to something anyway uh, in this process. So the assumption is uh, you know how you're going to use Python. Maybe you have some experience in econometrics. Maybe you're taking an econometrics class, uh, doing some data analysis. Maybe you know how to do that in uh, Excel or R or Stata or SAS, um, but you haven't tried Python yet. Uh, we're going to get to work on this. So I'm assuming you've starting from absolutely nothing, right? So what we're gonna do is walk through installing Python, installing Anaconda, which will give us over 200 uh, packages commonly used in data analysis, as well as access to the Jupyter Notebook interface, which is how we'll actually use Python. Uh, then we'll go grab some data and make a little plot um, using a few of those packages, just so we can see what we can do here and get, get a little bit of a start. So where do we want to be? We want to be here at python.org, right? So easy peasy, we go to downloads, choose your uh, operating system. Uh, it's a nice, easy, guided process to download it. Um, so walk through that, pause this video, time out. And now you're back, you've downloaded Python. We set that aside, we leave that alone. Now we go to Anaconda, right? So links in the description, uh, but we'll now go to docs.anaconda.com slash anaconda slash install. And again, pick your operating system of choice, walk through the guided installation process. Pause this video, time out. Now you're done and we come back. And now what you should have on your computer uh, is installed the Anaconda Navigator. Let's get me out of the way here. And this is going to make our lives really easy, right? So as I mentioned, Anaconda has, uh, it's basically a suite of packages specifically designed for data analysis. And it also has access to all of this documentation um, and the so-called Jupyter Notebook interface, right? So you're going to want to kind of block out a weekend, right, to just explore what's uh, available here. Um, so if you click on environments, so this is a list of all of the packages that you should now have installed. That's going to allow you to do any number of things. Um, and the documentation for most of that is going to be here. Uh, so lots of training, lots of information uh, that's going to get you moving. The one thing I wanted to show you was here, the so-called Jupyter Notebook, right? So if we click on launch, that's going to open up a new tab on your browser. And here it is. Uh, and like I said, this is going to be our interface with Python. There's other ways of doing it. Uh, this seems to be the, the easiest way. Uh, so we can, if you want to, uh, kind of choose a, a working directory to save your uh, your file that's going to contain your code. Um, so we can find where we want to do that. And we're going to want to go here to the new tab and choose Python 3. And here we have another new tab on our browser. And here is, as you can see, where we're going to put, uh, we're going to input and run our Python code. So we are now ready to go. And obviously, lots of different things we could do here. So for our example here, we're going to get data from the Federal Reserve Economic Database. Um, but one of the nice things about Python, one of the real powerful tools it has, is the ability to gather data from almost anywhere on the internet if you know how to do it. So that's going to be something you're really going to want to explore. Like it will just scratch the surface, as it were, here. So most things that we're going to need to do here is going to require us to call up or install a library or a package, right? So the PIP command is going to be something we'll see quite a bit. Uh, that's the preferred installer program. So we'll go PIP install pandas data reader. 
and we can go ahead and click on run here. Uh, you'll note again your first time through this. If you hit return, that just opens up a new line. It doesn't run the code, but if you go shift return, that does run the code. So here now we have we've read in the pandas data reader program, if you will, and now we can call it up. So we'll go import pandas underscore data reader as PDR. So we can just refer to it with that kind of shortcut. And now we're going to say, we're going to, we're going to bring in some data and we can name this so-called data frame, anything we want. We'll call it data one equals PDR. So that's calling up the pandas data reader. And we'll use this option, get data thread. And if you're familiar with the Federal Reserve Economic Database, it has hundreds, if not thousands, of primarily macroeconomic or financial time series uh, data variables that each have an individual code. So if there's a specific variable you want to go grab, you're going to have to go to the FRED website and find the code. But let's just say, for example, we want the federal funds rate. And this is a uh, case sensitive code. So we'll go pdr.getdatafred parentheses, single quotes, fed funds. And now we don't see it, but that data has been read in. So we can go data one, so that's the name of the data frame that we just created. Describe and then empty parentheses. And what we should get is the basic summary statistics for our variable. So the default uh, is to go back roughly five years. Uh, so we have 59 observations of monthly data and we get the mean, the standard deviation, the min, the max, et cetera. And that's all fantastic, right? So the last thing we'll do here is just to make a time series plot. That's generally the first thing you're gonna wanna do with uh, time series data is to get that visualization. So we're gonna, uh, again, import a package and here it's gonna be the MAT plot library dot pyplot. And we'll import this as PLT. So again, that's just something you could do to make it easier to refer to it. And now there's lots of options that we could do here to make a nice fancy kind of publication ready plot. We just want to get ourselves started here so we don't want to go crazy. Uh, so we'll do something like this. We'll go PLT dot plot. Uh, and then in parentheses, we refer to our data frame. So we call it data one. Okay. And then in square brackets, the name of the variable. And we only downloaded one variable. We'll look at kind of multivariate analysis uh, soon enough. So again, in our single quotes, we go fed funds. So that creates kind of this basic plot. And there it is. So we can go ahead and copy this, right? select it, copy it right into your document. You're ready to go. Obviously, we would want to add a lot to this. Um, but hey, now, if somebody asks you, have you ever used Python? You can say, yes. Yes, I have. So much more to come uh, on data analysis and econometrics uh, in Python. We'll be kind of putting it side by side with R and Stata as we go along to kind of compare the, the approaches and the output. Hopefully this was helpful and we'll see you next time. Thanks.